game. Right or wrong, history will look at it as the time Tom Brady lost the Super Bowl to Nick Foles. It will also be his third Super Bowl loss in his last five attempts. He's attempting not only to be the greatest football player, he's attempting to be the greatest athlete ever. It's Tom Brady, and he has the better team and the best, better quarterback with the better coach. His pressure's on him. I'm going with Tom Brady as well. We posed a question with Mike Francesco's at the table. Who's the better Super Bowl career? Tom Brady, 5-2, and two, right? Or Joe Montana, 4-0, who's never thrown an interception. And the feedback that we got that I was shocked by, mm -hmm. most fans still think it's Montana, that you'd rather have flawless. Six and two I'd to me. I'd rather have five of them more than four. I would too. Yeah, I would think that they would go Brady, but six and two is a lot better than five and two, and five and three is a lot worse than mm -hmm. five and two. Yeah. I think mm -hmm. Brady's got the pressure just for legacy. I'm going with the GOAT, too. Nick Foles has a ton of pressure on him, so Nick Foles is the like yeah! to me. He played the best this past weekend, and the pressure that he's feeling is not for the simple fact that he's the backup quarterback leading his team into a Super Bowl up against Tom Brady. It's the fact that he's playing for his future. Like yeah. We forget this isn't just a momentary thing for Nicholas Foles. He could be playing himself into a position where now he's considered a great quarterback once again. Nick Foles at one point was the record seven touchdowns in one game. I yeah. think Tom has six, so give him Nick Foles the edge in that one. And I will say this, when it comes to pure talent surrounding him, on. I do feel like Nick Foles has more talent surrounding him, okay. especially given the fact that Gronk could be on the fence this game with that concussion. I'm looking at Nick, not because of the game, though, but because Nick is playing for his future. If he plays like he did last week and loses the game, what does his future look like? It looks very bright with a lot of really? money. Really? Even if they lose? Yeah, if he plays great and they yeah. lose? Oh, yeah. You play great against the goal? For sure. I hope he has a future if you call him Nicholas. I love that. I mean, you gotta make that a thing. Did you guys not hear him say like Foles is like Cabra? I did, yeah. He was the goal last weekend. He was the goal last weekend. Next up, yesterday, Nate called this Super Bowl dynasty versus dogs. So in this matchup, what is the most interesting storyline heading into Minneapolis? Nate? For me, the most interesting storyline is what Peter just touched on. It's Tom Brady chasing greatness. And, you know, for most people to say, well, if he gets there and he doesn't win, I'm going to give him a knock. I, I hate when people have that philosophy and thinking. They knock uh, LeBron James for making it to the finals, but he brings his team to the point where they're at the brink of being immortalized that season. So I'm looking at Tom, and not only is he chasing greatness within the sport, but he's chasing greatness outside the mm -hmm. lines of football. And I gotta be honest with you, I've never looked at Tom Brady as one of the best athletes of all time. I've always said he's one of the best sports figures he's not of Bo all Jackson. time. Jackson. We're not talking right. about skills. But we're talking about grandeur. I know, uh, grandeur, but him winning this, though, yeah. now all of a sudden I have to rethink that. And I will consider him an athlete because now the definition of an athlete has changed. Mm. Me being a guy who's always ran fast and jumped high and yeah. did these fantastic things in all three sports, I looked at myself as an athlete. But he's re redefining that. And so if why? he goes out Five there and wins. to six wings? I don't get it. What's, how's it what's, what's the danger here? Because he's, he's already passed up a great, we thought the GOAT was in the quarterback position, which yeah. is Joe Montana. Now you're chasing a great, which is who I think is the best athlete ever, Michael Jordan. Yeah, yeah. Ali. Like, and Ali. Yeah. Now I'm looking at him as the best athlete. Yeah, he might not run a 4 4. He's not going to jump a 45 inch vertical. But because of what he does, never been a threat to run, he could be go down, he could go down as the best athlete of all time. My storyline is on the other side. It's the Eagles. And Kay, you kind of touched on the turnaround they've had as far as the roster. But I look at specifically that front office. And about four years ago, Chip Kelly was hired. Chip Kelly came in. He was this innovative mind from the University of Oregon. And he looked at Howie Roseman and the GM and said, no, 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 I'm going to pick the players. You go deal with the business side of things. Pushed Howie to the side. Howie stayed there in Philadelphia. Eventually, Chip burns out with the players. He's fired. Howie says, I'm coming back as GM, I'm coming mm. back as the EVP. This is the perfect ending to that whole cycle here for Howie Roseman and the, and the Eagles front office because all of these guys were pushed to the side and now they're going to come back and say, we built the Super Bowl champion and we did it ourselves. You know, Chip Kelly's responsible for getting rid of LaShawn McCoy, mm. Deshaun Jackson, a lot of those guys. Mm -hmm. The Eagles front office have to rebuild that team yes. and they're doing it and they're at the Super Bowl so quickly. It's an amazing story. It is amazing. I, we have 12 days to talk about Eagles Patriots. I'm just going to go one more time on this. Imagine you're the Vikings, all right? Imagine you're the Vikings, and you buy a huge, expensive house. You design the whole thing, it's perfect, and you're, you're gonna have this massive house party, and you got the music, and the food, and everybody's coming, and you're so excited. Well, Smokies. Everything, and you cannot imagine, you got everything you could ever want, greatest house party ever. And then two weeks before the party, you, your wife leaves you, your kids leave you, someone, your rival who lives down the street takes them from you and is then having the party in your house. They're sleeping in your bed, they're not sleeping in your bed, they're with your kids, they're with everything, and you gotta sit there and just watch, knock, and be like, no, you can't come in. The Viking storyline is crazy. You are such a sadist. I feel like you enjoy this a little bit. <laughs> I, don't know how you, I don't know how you get that idea. Isn't that Ricky Bobby? Isn't that what happened to Ricky Bobby? Yes! yes. They, 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 the excellence up the there. Oh, Ricky Bobby. Always. Oh, yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, sure. Amazing. I feel like those people.
people. Richard, Shake them back. The storyline is the David versus Goliath thing, but back yeah. to the Brady, and you brought this up on the on whiteboard onesie with motivation. Like, what's actually motivating? Is it tying the Steelers with six? Is it maybe winning this year? And then is he going to come back next year because he wants to do three in a row and he thinks he'll be the only quarterback to ever do that? You know, mm. that, I think he's just trying to get a nice cushion because Garoppolo is going to win seven. Ah. So he's just trying to get as many as he you. can. I got That's you. That makes fair. sense. Yeah. Journalism <laughs> 101 rolling on here. Bill Belichick considered one, if not the greatest, coach of all time. But let's talk about the guy on the other sideline. Here's my question, guys. When will Doug Peterson and his visor get the respect they deserve? January 23rd, 20, 2018, today, can you get it now? Yeah. I think there's an interesting thing where you look at Frank Reich, okay? Doug Peterson, forgettable career outside of Philly as a quarterback. Frank Reich, legend, college, pro, did these amazing things. So it's almost like you look at the coordinator, like he's cooler, he's sexier, he's more famous, and all Doug Peterson does is go on and win 15 games and lose the MVP quarterback in the middle of the season and then win two playoff games. He should get it now. What time is it? Wherever you are, whatever time zone you're in, now. January 23rd, yeah. go. McVay won uh, the Pro Football Writers Association's Coach of the Year, and we heard Mike Zimmer getting a lot of love, and we heard, obviously, Doug Marone. You didn't hear Doug Peterson's name at all right. for Coach of the Year. Right. And I don't know if he's going to get a single vote, Crazy. but I'm looking at what this team did, especially after Wentz goes down. A lot of teams collapse. I have to go with Kyle on this. we got to give the guy some respect. And yeah. that whole underdog embodying the thing, I don't know if he was a film editor or what, but Doug Peterson put together some good footage to get those players yeah. to buy in on this underdog yeah. thing and believe that the media completely canceled them out. Do you yeah. think there's a sentiment that, like, so Roseman wins executive here, a sentiment that he gave you all the groceries, he gave you every toy you could possibly need, anybody could coach this team, that this games were won in the front office, because I think that's BS. Even if you got the right groceries, you still got to go cook the right. food. I mean, you talk about Wentz, even before that, it was Hicks, Sproles, Peters, and coaches say all the time, Let's protect our dirt. We heard that, right? Protect our dirt from different coaches and different players across the league. I know firsthand coaches will walk into a team meeting and say, we must win at home. We have to win at home. That's a big deal. Over the last two seasons, they're 15 and three at home. That's including playoffs. And one of those losses was that Cowboys game week it's 17. It's not a loss. It's nothing. And uh, the team's defense is usually a direct reflection of your coach. And the way those guys play, hard nose. They say the right thing in front of the media and they go out there and bloody your mouth. That's because their head coach is preaching the right things and they're going out there and playing that way. If there is a kind of sentiment that's totally dispelled by your argument, I feel like, the fact that they are going to the Super Bowl with a backup quarterback and they made, it wasn't uh, Bradford goes down and they put Keenum in there and they run the same offense. They did change up the yes. offense quite a bit for Nick Foles and he's thriving in it, playing the best football of his life. So no that's a testament to coaching, not front time. office. But it's that one-two punch, Rose and Peterson, that's right. we see you. Next up, where? As you may know, 13 years ago, these two teams, the Pats and the Eagles, they, the Eagles, they squared off for the Lombardi Trophy with, on, with that on the line. So back in February, 05, guys, where were you guys? Go ahead, guys. Go ahead. Where were you guys I'll go the first. last time? I was, 05. A, I was a freelance writer for ESPN.com, page two. Oh, okay, page two? Page two, the, and I was freelance, and I wanted to go so badly and they said, okay, you can pay your own way, you can go to Jacksonville. I'm like, all right, I'm going to pay my own way, I was going to book my own flight, like, but we also can't get you a credential to any of the events. So I would have been in Jacksonville walking around, <laughs> so I watched it on my couch, but I blogged about it live yeah. blog. I'm surprised you didn't go. Yeah. I, really I want to see some of those columns. Did you Me compare, too? like, athletes to Temptation Island? I think I did. I think I did. That was page two. That was it, Temptation I was, Island. <laughs> Remember that? Oh, yeah. That's really a fruitful Where show. You? Very good message to the public. I was uh, sitting ahead. at my townhouse in Eden Prairie, Minnesota, with my wife and a one-year-old little Nate trying to figure out where my future was if I was going to be a Minnesota Viking or take a chance at being a free agent watching this game understanding that I was close my first few years in the league and oh, I'm young I'll get back to the Super Bowl at some point never made it so I remember mm -hmm. watching this game and witnessing greatness Wow. Well, speaking of greatness, um, where wasn't I in 2005? I was on Days of Our Lives. I was in a daytime drama. My character was overseas, uh, losing his leg in a landmine mishap, for real. Uh, in my real life, I was the Grand Marshal of the parade in this town called Rhine, Georgia. You can look it up. I think they gave me 600 bucks, and I'm like, I'm in. I'll go. And then you go, and you go to the Cracker Barrel, and you do all that stuff. Yes, Rhine, Georgia. Not Atlanta. What is the responsibility to the Grand Marshal of the Rhine, Georgia town parade? Well, you got to sit in a convertible Corvette. They probably had like a LeBaron or something like that and you just wave and then you put the the flowers on and then you intermix with the locals and they get their money's worth <laughs> you know what i mean they, 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 they get their money's worth all right yeah yeah, yeah. They get, they get in there we Finally, love you ryan georgia it's the why to wrap up journalism 101 <laughs> right. the patriots have a history of success in the postseason we all know that and a fistful of rings of course to prove it so why peter nate and kyle mm -hmm. why should i believe 
that Super Bowl 52 will not end with a sixth title for Brady Ooh. and Belichick. Because every single Super Bowl the Patriots are in is really close. It always, win or loss, it always comes down to the last play. And I keep coming back to this. The Eagles have an incredible defense. I think they have the best O-line and D-line in all of football. And they're going to hit Brady. And if you hit Brady, you can win. They have a shot. Because the way that the Giants beat the Patriots at two Super Bowls was as a defensive line that got after Tom Brady, whether it was O.C. and Tuck or it was Jay Alford or whoever else. Michael Strahan and this defensive line of Chris Long, Fletcher Cox, Timmy Jernigan, Vinnie Curry, they come in waves, and that's how you beat the Patriots. Mm -hmm. I think this team can do it. So it's going to be that, and you're not Eli Foles, and none of that matters. It's the defensive line. I think it does. And Blake Bortles was up 10 points in the fourth quarter a week ago. You know, it can yeah. be done. Yeah. Foles was great. Last week, Foles played as well as Eli ever did in any playoff game he ever played. Love hearing that. And that's why I feel like you can't count out the Eagles, because Foles played a damn near perfect game. And if Foles is looking in the mirror, he's saying to himself, if I play better in the Super Bowl than I played this past weekend, and my defense shows up like they did, mm. I'll be a Super Bowl champ. Mm. Extra credit question. Yeah. If you, uh, do you feel mm. right now as confident as last year that the, remember like the Falcons, they were so yeah. great, historical yeah. offense, top 10 offense. How are you guys feeling as far as comparing it to what you felt Ooh, this week last year? Recency bias. The yeah. Eagles look so good this past weekend. It but looked so good. The Falcons looked amazing they did. all the season. The Falcons were plowing everybody, but the fact is... The defense the, is different. And the Vikings were a great, great football team this year, and they just got housed. So 